Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the show. It's the Level 1 Podcast. I'm DSP, broadcasting to you live from lovely Washington State here this morning. It is Tuesday, the 16th of April, 2024. It is a new release day. Oddly enough, a Tuesday. What? Yeah, remember when video games used to come out on Tuesday? Like, all the time? Like, every single one? It's been a long time since then, but today we actually have a new one. So... It'll be interesting because it is a completely unique game with a little bit of a backstory. Um, and I certainly can't wait to see it. Uh, but in addition to that, uh, it's also a lovely streaming day. Nice, cool weather outside. Jasper Kitty is in the office booping my wires around on the floor. And I'm bringing back some of the uh, borders that we used to have for this podcast last year for variety's sake. Figure, hey, we got a bunch of Street Fighter ones. We now have some new Fallout ones. <clears throat> Might not have some variety on the show. So, I welcome you all here to the podcast. I hope you're all in a good mood. Um, today's show, we'll cover a few different topics. I'd like to do a little bit of a bookend, um, since I've now finished Alone in the Dark and give you my final thoughts on the game. Uh, I have a new idea for something I want to do tomorrow night in regards to the Fallout TV show review. I think it's something interesting that I came up with. I talked about it last night. Uh, on the uh, Daily Wrap, but obviously I'd like to have this discussion with a live audience and see what you guys think. In addition, a little bit of game news today. So a little bit of variety of stuff today. Um, I'm excited to hang out with you guys for the podcast. And of course, then right after the podcast, a brand new game that we're going to be diving into for the first time to see if it's something that we're interested in possibly covering further. So, <clears throat> welcome, welcome, and welcome to the show. If you're not in a good mood, Hopefully we'll change that today with a little bit of chill vibes and discussion. Um, so here we go. So first off, great streaming week so far. I think we've had a good variety of stuff this week. I'm having a great time. Uh, happy to be here for all the streams, by the way, because as you know, last couple of months I've had mostly interrupted streaming weeks where I'd miss a stream or two for various reasons. And this week I'm actually here all week long without interruption, which is great. Uh... <laughs> So thank you all for being here live, and for those who continue to watch this show on demand, I appreciate you. Uh, let's talk a little bit about yesterday, all right? Very quick, quickly. It won't be a giant discussion or anything. But yesterday, Monday, we got back to full-time gaming after my weekly uh, React Day on Sunday. <clears throat> and we jumped back into Helldivers 2, which is now continuing. I think this was like my maybe my fourth session of the game or something like that. Um, maybe fifth. I'm not sure. But... In Helldivers 2, I am making smooth and constant progress, which is always a good thing. I'm getting better at the game. I'm unlocking better stratagems. I'm learning exactly, you know, how to utilize them and how to help out my party in the best way. It's a slow process for a couple reasons. You know, number one, I'm only playing the game a couple times a week. So when you don't really have time to sit there and just focus on it every day, it's a little bit of a learning curve. And then on top of that, you know, I don't usually play these team-based games, so... You know, I always forget about things like, oh, yeah, there's a map that I could be using to figure out where to go. Yeah, it's kind of useful. I just, I literally just learned yesterday that when you die, the, uh, there's icons on the map for where you dropped, like, your stratagem weapons. I was like, oh, so I could just run right back there and get the big gun, the auto cannon that I dropped? I'm like, yeah, it's on the map. Oh, I didn't know that. And I've been playing this for, you know, <laughs> probably about a dozen hours now or something like that, and I didn't even know that yet, right? So... <clears throat> It's slow progress, but it is progress. The good news is, after yesterday's stream, I hit level 15. And at level 15, you unlock a bunch of good stuff. For example, I got the orbital laser, which apparently is super good. I got the 500 kilogram uh, bomb. Is it kilogram? I don't even know what it is. 500 something bomb. That's an eagle strike. And then I also got a force field you can put down to protect your whole team uh, when you're trying to hold out and survive for an objective. So I bought a whole bunch of new stuff, and I'm like, oh, don't have time to try it. <laughs> but it was a good stream regardless. Uh, every stream, you know, sometimes we have a little bit of technical issues. I get kicked from a lobby or a dumb troll. But usually it's not a big deal, and now I learned how to uh, ban people. <clears throat> I say ban people. What I mean is block people so that you don't get them in your, your matches, you know, moving forward. So once someone acts like a jackass, oh, trolling DSP, <laughs> you block them, and you never have to see them ever again. System seems to be working pretty smoothly in that regard, so that's a good thing. Uh, anyway, so, so far, so good. Had a good time in Helldivers 2 yesterday. Uh, last night was the conclusion of Alone in the Dark, the survival horror game that I've been playing for about a week and a half, two weeks. 
uh, clocked in at the end of my second run at around, I want to say, 16 hours of gameplay. So if you play both sides of this game, it's 16 hours. Now, it's a $60 game. I don't know if the price has dropped yet because it hasn't even been out a month yet. But first of all, just, you know, just judging fairly. 16 hours for $60. You might say, man, that sounds pretty overpriced, right? Um, I mean, you may be right. You got to remember, it is survival horror. Typically, survival horror games just aren't that long. The few exceptions to that actually are kind of inferior games. Like, Resident Evil 6 is really long, but is it even really survival horror? You know what I'm saying? It's more like a run-and-gun action game. Um, so typically, survival horror games just aren't that long. All right. Um, now, you heard a noise? It was because Harold Halibut stopped to finish downloading on my Xbox, so it made a blipping sound. That's what you heard. Um, anyway, so... I say 16 hours. However, there's a catch. There's a big asterisk. It's really only 10 hours for your first run. There's two sides to this game because there's two playable characters. Okay? Now, you could do two runs like I did. But, and I hate to say this because this is pretty disappointing, the vast majority of the gameplay of your second run is identical to the gameplay of the first. There's only two key differences. Number one... The actual cutscenes are different because the cutscenes are character specific. Number two, there is one gameplay segment that is different. And it is in the final chapter of the game and it only lasts about 30 minutes. So, that is pretty disappointing that the game was advertised that it would be a two-sided game. You could play as two completely separate characters, two different runs with different scenarios. And then you play, it's like, it's literally the same game except for 30 minutes. So I don't know. I, I kind of feel like maybe originally their plan was to have totally different campaigns for the characters, but they just ran out of time or resources. You got to remember that Alone in the Dark has been delayed tons of times. Um, It was originally supposed to come out like over a year ago. Then it got delayed. Then it was supposed to come out around Halloween time. Then it got delayed. Then it was supposed to come out like in January, then it got delayed and it finally came out in late March. So it had like all of these delays and issues before it finally came out. Maybe they just, they couldn't get it pull it off, right? Because I feel like if the game did actually have two different campaigns, it would have probably been one of my favorite survival horror games of the last several years. But the fact that it's almost identical is kind of a big, almost a bait and switch. You know, you say, oh, it's 60 bucks and it's only 10 hours per run, but at least you get two runs, but you really don't. <clears throat> now, the positives about the game, okay? The story is creepy, suspenseful, keeps you guessing, on the edge of your seat, and right to the end, you've got all these different scenarios and possibilities, and at the end of the game, you're actually kind of left guessing, but you have options. And what I mean by that is, the game presents you with several different scenarios of what could really be happening in this mansion. And it's kind of up to you to decide at the end which one is right. Like, at the end, I, you know, in one case, it's something truly supernatural. In another case, maybe it's not. Maybe it's something scientific that can easily be explained away. But ultimately, there's no big, like, answer at the end of the game. It's kind of up to you to figure out. And you know what? That's kind of like how a lot of horror movies work, right? A lot of horror movies these days don't ever give you a definitive explanation of exactly what's been going on at the end. They just leave it open to interpretation. Some people hate that. Some people think it's good because it, it leaves that open-ended for sequels and stuff. Personally, I prefer a real explanation, but that's just me. The graphics, the atmosphere, the music, all of the, the design of the game is very, very well done and creepy. Whether you're inside the mansion and creepy things are happening, right? <clears throat> Enemies are jumping out. Uh, you know, a door slams in your face, a loud sound, a character appears out of thin air, um, or whether you're in one of these alternate dimensional stages where you're on a boat or you're in a graveyard or, you know, you're inside of an Egyptian tomb. No, I'm not making that up. All that stuff happens in the game, and it's all pretty creepy. It's well executed. I was surprised because I thought for a game of this stature that's not being made by a giant AAA studio that it would probably be inferior, but I'll be honest, the, the graphics kind of reminded me of Hel uh, um, Hellblade. That's exactly what they reminded me of, Hellblade. 
you know, a studio that you didn't you didn't think would do so well, and then all of a sudden they made a game and the game looked great. Okay. Um, however, the one place where the game does kind of stutter is the the actual combat. But if you if you bear with me here, I think it's actually intentional. Okay, I really do. I think that the combat is made so that you feel a little clunky. And basically, the way this works is once you fire your weapon, you kind of lose your aim. Like, you're, you have a targeting, you know, they call it reticle, and it's very narrow. You fire once, and it goes whoop. Now, if you need to fire again fast, you're incredibly inaccurate. So the goal is to try to get enough distance between you and the enemy so you can get a shot off, wait for that target to get small again, and then fire again. If you don't, and you just like boom, 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 you just start firing wildly, and you miss the enemy a ton. <clears throat> and that actually makes it scarier, scarier in my opinion it's actually more realistic and it makes it feel more tense when the enemies are coming towards you okay now arguably if there if that was all you could really do then it wouldn't be like you'd be scary but i think sadly the game has a, a melee cam mechanic a melee attack that is very abusable and spammable and the, i mean the way they counter that is the melee weapons break after a few hits but still, what ends up happening is you'll have two, three enemies coming at you. You'll shoot the first one and down it. The second one, you'll get a bullet in. Then you run out of time. So you just start mashing on the uh, on the melee attack. And you, you win. And you might take a hit. But typically, it's not that big of a deal. Um, the game does get harder later on when smaller enemy types are introduced that are harder to hit and actually hit you for way more damage. Um, there is a dodge mechanic. And it sucks. The dodge essentially doesn't really do much at all because there's no iframes on it. So it just moves you out of the way, but if there's no room for you to move, you just walk into a corner and get hit anyway. So it's kind of silly. There's a healing item that you can kind of spam. There's been a couple times in the game when I was like cornered and I got hit by an enemy and I just kept mashing up on the D-pad and all of a sudden, without even an animation, my health would go up. So it's kind of a weird mechanic. Um, you might say, well, this just sounds like the, it's not polished. Well, honestly, it kind of feels like an older survival horror game to me. Like, the way that they built the combat makes it always feel like you're not some superhuman agent of stars who can do flying side flips and punch boulders. Instead, you kind of feel a little clunky, a little slow. And it actually adds to the horror aspect of the game for me. Maybe a lot of people don't agree with me and think that it should have been a more refined combat engine. But personally, I, I actually enjoyed it because it made me feel more creeped out in certain situations. Okay? Um... The game also has tons of puzzles, and the puzzles range from insanely simplistic to a little bit tricky. I think that the hardest puzzle in the game for me, so you're in a basement in front of an x-ray projector screen. You know how you have those backlit screens, and if you're looking at an x-ray that's translucent, you put it up to the screen and it shines the light through. So you need to take five different x-rays, okay, and position them on a board, a light board, to see the brain. But each piece, each x-ray is only a piece of the brain. Well, guess what? Two of them don't work. Two of them are different size and don't fit, but you don't know that and the game doesn't tell you. So you sit here trying to fit five x-rays together and you're not supposed to. You're only supposed to fit three of them, but you don't know that. So <laughs> it's just like, oh, come on. I, I took like no exaggeration. It was like 20 minutes to figure out this one puzzle and I looked like a jackass on stream because I didn't know that you're only supposed to use three, and I'm trying to fit all five. I'm like, how the hell does this work? I look so dumb. <clears throat> but some of the, the puzzles are are kind of ingenious, so it's kind of like a mix, I would say. I didn't have an issue. Game reviewers seemed to think that the puzzles were bad. They were like, oh, I hate these puzzles. I'm like, maybe you just don't do a lot of puzzles. You know what I'm saying? Like, in the modern day, a lot of games don't have very interesting puzzles anymore. So maybe because the dumbing down of the gaming universe has happened, you're just not used to doing puzzles that need intelligent thought, and that's why you didn't like them. Personally, I, I didn't have issue with them. Well, a lot of people apparently did, okay? Now, <clears throat> excuse me. All that being said, the total package is good. However, I am disappointed with the fact, again, that the second run is mostly the same as the first. When we beat the game last night, I actually did manage to get a secret ending, which is cool because I didn't know I could. I thought that I was locked out of getting the secret endings because I missed one single collectible. This game has 45 hidden collectibles that you need to find. And when you collect them, you either get hidden lore, sometimes a hidden cutscene, or you get a cat. They actually ship my cat to your house. Jasper shows up and acts silly. All right, that doesn't happen. You probably like that, though. Um, no, or you can unlock a secret ending. And 
<clears throat> I did get a secret ending yesterday that I actually thought was funny. It was a, one of those what if scenario endings that isn't real. For example, remember in Silent Hill, they always had like the alien ending or the dog ending. Well, that's similar to what this ending is. It's just kind of a silly, silly ending to the game that's not meant to be serious. Um, and I got that one. I couldn't get the other two secret endings because I had missed one single collectible in the game. And this game does not allow you to go back and get things you've missed because a lot of the stuff is stuck in these almost like dream state worlds that once you've beaten them, they don't, they don't come back. They're not accessible again. So that was annoying because I was hoping to get everything in the game and I couldn't, okay? I could have, again, if I did a third run of the game, I could have went back and got the item I missed. But it's like, how many times am I going to play through the same game, right? Um, ultimately... Alone in the Dark is a good survival horror romp. If you like survival horror and you like some of the old-timey survival horror games and you're okay with combat that's a little clunky, it's really the plot that carries the game and the atmosphere. <clears throat> um, but don't look for the best survival horror game ever in it. It's not. Nor does it stand up to, say, the great games recently, such as Resident Evil 8 or Resident Evil 4 Remake. <clears throat> but it's still quite good. I'm happy that I played it. Um... You know, a lot of people are saying, is it worth 60 bucks? I mean, honestly, no. It doesn't feel like it has enough content to be worth 60 bucks. Maybe wait for it to go on sale if you're interested in it. And then snag it, because I think a lot of people, sadly, are going to not play this game ever because the critics panned it. Some of the critics gave it like a 5 out of 10 and stuff. It's like, this is not a 5 out of 10 game by any means. Does it have a few game bugs? Yeah. And you can get out of them. They're not game-breaking. <clears throat> Some of the puzzles can be a little annoying, but they're solvable if you use your brain. So modern, you know, journalists, they just slam a game if it's not a giant AAA studio and if it's not ultra super polished looking, you know, probably they hated the combat. I almost guarantee you that's what they hated the most. It's not that bad. That's all I have to say. It's, it's a decent game. It's not that bad. And give it a look if you like survival horror, but I wouldn't pay 60 bucks for it. There you go. And of course, by all means, check out my playthrough, both sides. It's all in one playlist here on the channel. Okay. <clears throat> so that was yesterday. Let's now talk about what's coming up for the rest of the week, shall we? Because I have an interesting idea to discuss with you guys this morning. But before we get to that, today we're trying a new game called Harold Halibut. Yes. Harold Halibut. His, la his last name is basically a fish. And you might say, well, what is this game? Good question. Many of you may not realize this. Harold Halibut has been in development for 14 years. Yes, they started making this game back in 2010. They started raising funds and trying to crowdfund it. <clears throat> it is claymation style, meaning all of the animations and things in the game are claymation. Apparently, they made a giant model of this ship that the game takes place on and did painstaking animation to make the game now what exactly is the game from what i read in the description all right let's listen to this because let me let me actually go to <clears throat> let's see where's the game's page game card harold halibut is a handmade narrative game about friendship and life on a city-sized spaceship submerged in an alien ocean join harold as he explores a vibrant retro future world in his quest to find the true meaning of home Huh. Exactly. Even just reading the description, I have no idea what this game is. Even looking at the screenshots of it, I still have no idea what this game is. Is it going to be like a point-and-click adventure like the old Secret of Monkey Island games? Is it going to be like a Telltale game? Like, what is it? I have no clue. I still don't know. So, we're going to find out together today. It is a Game Pass game, so if you have Game Pass, you can get it without any additional cost. Um, and that's why I'm excited to try it out. You guys recently have said to me, we really wish you would try more games. Instead of only playing the giant AAA games, there's so many games out there now. Why not try a bigger variety? Well, that's exactly what I'm doing. We're going to try this game today. We're going to see if it's any good. If it's good, we'll keep playing it. We'll keep it in the rotation. I don't know, how, you know what streams will do it. We'll figure it out, but I'll keep it there. If we play it and it's not so good, we don't have to play it again. It could very well be that it's a fine game, but it just doesn't fit the format of what I do or what you guys would enjoy watching, right? And that's fine. Not every game 
is going to fit the mold of what we do here on DSP Gaming. But I think it's worth give, giving it a shot, and it's good to have variety on the channel instead of the same stuff over and over, and that's why we're checking this out today. So I hope that you guys will stick around after the podcast ends to try a completely new style of unique game that was 14 years in development. Let's at least appreciate that, that a game stuck to 14 years of development to come out and finally is out, and at least maybe we can enjoy it for that, even if it's a game that we don't play fully, right? So there you go. Let's give it a look. Please stick around after the podcast for that. Uh, tonight's late stream at 6.45 p.m. Pacific time is Street Fighter VI, and that's actually one of the reasons why I brought back the Street Fighter border from last year, and we'll be playing with a certain Brazilian beastie boy by the name of Blanca. I even have my Brazilian tropical shirt on today in honor of the return of Blanca. We're actually doing a whole late night stream of that. Not switching characters tonight. It's just going to be Blanca all night long. I cannot wait to give him a, a shot for sure, I want to get back into the swing of things with the character. I, I feel like he was my best or tied with Dalsim to be my best character. And I want to get practice in, basically. I really want to jump in and, and, and get down to, to learning more strategies and or, you know, getting back into the swing of things. I didn't get a chance to watch any gameplay last night. I literally was going to watch gameplay and I fell asleep in bed. I was like, okay, I'm going to watch some Blanca videos before I go to sleep. Mm. Becoming old and this is what happens when you get old. You get tired. You fall asleep. So, um, I'll do my best tonight. I hope you'll join me for that. Should be a good, fun time. Tomorrow, the day stream will be the continuation of Elden Ring, and we have a big choice to make. Do we do the Moog blood area? Do we continue in the mountaintop of the giants and defeat the fire giant and move on to Faramazula? Or do we head into the frozen wastes of the north and do all the optional content up there, unlocking the path to the Haley tree? Any one of those is a perfectly viable option. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what you guys want. Maybe we'll even put it like to a poll to see if you guys uh, want to do one thing over another. But I'm excited for more progress. And some people have said, well, how many more streams of Elden Ring? If we do everything, like if we do Haley Tree and everything, we're probably talking another five to ten streams. Seriously, like Haley Tree alone, I see taking at least two streams if not three okay and then if you ca count the Moog blood palace stuff which is tough and, and the rest of fair missoula that's at least another two three streams there at least you know and then we got to do the rest of the frozen waste and everything so yeah i mean yeah it's we've still got a ways to go this end game stuff takes a while and it's challenging it's interesting to see how i can tackle it with my magic build okay so that continues on so here's the big thing i want to present to all of you i talked about it on last night's daily wrap if you missed it, shame on you. You should be watching every single Daily Wrap without fail and without skipping a single episode. How dare you miss one? I'm just kidding. You can miss one if you want. Um, but anyway, last night I came up with an idea. And here's the idea. So I just finished watching the Fallout TV series with my wife. We really liked it. And you guys asked me to review it. And I said, sure, I would review it for my DSP Reacts channel. Why not? Right? Cool. And I was thinking about it in my head. I was like, you know, this is an eight-episode series. Each episode's an hour long. I have a good amount of stuff I want to talk about. Likely, this review is going to take a while. It's not going to be like a five-minute review. This could take like 30, 40 minutes for me to review an eight-hour series, right? And I was thinking, first of all, that's going to be tough to cram in after doing other streams, right? It would be. It would be like, I mean, i got to cram in another 45 minutes of recording and uploading on top of my usual work schedule. On top of that, because I like the show so much, and because I know you guys like Fallout just like me, I would want to have like a discussion about the show. And I was thinking, but I can't do that on this podcast. Why? Because of spoilers. There's going to be a lot of people who probably have not seen the Fallout show, correct? How am I going to have a discussion with you guys about the show if it would spoil for half the people who didn't see it? It wouldn't make sense. And I don't want to have to have people have to skip the podcast just simply because I'm talking about fa the Fallout show on that podcast, right? So, here's the deal. Tomorrow night, on my late stream, 6.45 p.m. Pacific time, I will not be here on DSP Gaming. My final stream of the week will be over on the DSP Reacts channel. That's youtube.com forward slash at DSP Reacts. So just to forewarn all of you, if you're interested in attending this Fallout stream, 
subscribe to the channel now. Why? Because you need to be subscribed for 24 hours to talk on that channel. I don't want you to show up to the stream to hang out and interact and, oh, I can't talk, I forgot to subscribe. Okay? So subscribe. <clears throat> the DSP reacts now if you want to talk with me on tomorrow night's stream. It's going to be the Fallout TV live interactive review show. So I will talk about my thoughts about the show for roughly a half an hour, 45 minutes. All right? I'll tell you what I liked, what I didn't like lore changes and things to the sh to the universe now of Fallout. Because what's hilarious, and this is so funny, Todd Howard in November was interviewed and he said the Fallout TV show will be canon to the game show, or to the games. Immediately as the, the, it starts, it's not canon. <laughs> it or, or it's changing all of the lore. So it's like, so either it's canon or it's not. If it is, you're literally changing the entire world you already built in the games. So what is it, right? I like to think Todd Howard's an idiot, because he is. He literally just talks out of his asshole constantly just to get people excited about stuff. He lies constantly. He really is. He's, a, he's known to being an infamous liar. I don't think this show is canon to the games at all. I think it's its own universe. It's similar to the games, and it has some characters that cross over and stuff, but I don't think it's the game universe. I want to say it's like its own cinematic-style universe, right? Much like how Marvel has their cinematic universe and their comic book universe, and they're separate but kind of the same right? So, that's what I think, anyway. And we'll, we can talk about that for sure. Um, it doesn't make sense how it could be canon, and then immediately changes everything. So, we'll talk about that tomorrow. But anyway, um, people are freaking out about this. So, I think this could be a great uh, d discussion that we can have tomorrow night on this stream. You know, what's better? The game universe? The TV universe? Do you like the changes? that were made in the show? Do you not like the changes that were made in the show? Which would you prefer? Is there actually a way to rectify the fact that there's changes? Or do you think that they just messed it up so bad you can't? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I guess we will, uh, we'll see. But anyway, I feel like the stream is better interactive, right? Because at least I could tell my thoughts on the show and then what I'd like to do since people will be live, we'll have conversation. We'll go back and forth and talk about the elements of the show. I'm sure there'll be contributions to shout out and answer those questions and things like that, much like my normal streams. That would be much better than me just talking to a camera for 45 minutes and then being like, well, what do you think? Leave a comment. And then I get two comments on the video and there's no discussion. I'd much rather have the discussion. I think the discussion is more interesting than me just blabbing, okay? So that's why I would like to hang out with you guys. But this means... If you're going to attend that stream tomorrow night, you have to be okay with spoilers. Yes, that stream will literally be spoiler-filled. We're basically going to talk about the plot of the entire show, the growth of the characters over the show, stuff like that. So you absolutely have to have watched the show or at least be okay with completely being spoiled about the show to attend the stream, okay? And then the good thing is, because we've done it that way, we don't have to talk about the show further on this podcast and it won't get spoiled for anyone who still hasn't seen it yet. But then those who see it can go watch that after the fact as an on-demand video and still enjoy the review. See, I think this works perfectly. Um, I, it's genius. I don't know why I never thought of this before. It's pretty stupid that I haven't. I don't know why I've never thought of an interactive discussion review of something rather than me just doing a review talking to the camera. That's, I'm just like scratching my head. How did I not figure this out? I... I don't know, but hey, it's 2024 and things are a-changing, right? So maybe <clears throat> this could be the idea for new content on DSP Reacts. When there's a show or a big game or something worth reviewing and having a discussion about, we could do it live together. Right? How cool would that be? So, if you guys have watched the entirety of the show, join me tomorrow night, but forewarned, we're warning. We're going to be talking about the whole show. So if you're six episodes in and you don't know what the end is and you don't want to be spoiled, you probably shouldn't come by. You should probably watch it on demand. Um, but I know a lot of you have watched it just like me. So that's tomorrow night, Wednesday night, late stream, 6.45 p.m. Pacific time. That's on my YouTube channel, DSP Reacts, youtube.com forward slash at DSP Reacts. I hope you will come by and hang out with me for this very fun interactive review stream of the Fallout TV series should be a good watch, and it should be a good uh, on-demand watch after the fact as well for those who haven't finished yet. There you go. Cool, right? Excellent. All right. Let's continue. So, 
I'll be off from streaming on Thursday. When I return on Friday, <clears throat> excuse me, the day stream uh, will be either more Helldivers 2, or if we really like Harold Halibut, we'll probably play Harold Halibut again. Um, it really depends um, on how it goes today. If we like the game, let's keep playing it. If not, then we won't. Uh, Friday night will be Friday Night Fights, which means more Street Fighter 6. What that will be, I'm not sure yet. Maybe I'll want to do more Blanca. Maybe I'll want to actually go to ranked. I don't know. Let's leave it open. Let's figure it out together on Friday night. And then Saturday, basically, will either be Elden Ring or Helldivers or Harold Halibut, one of those three. And Saturday night will be the premiere of the co-op of myself and my wife playing Beyond Two Souls. This week, we're hoping that nothing else happens, no extenuating circumstances. My wife will be used to her new work schedule. We're actually not going out on our day off this week, so we'll be able to get caught up on all the, the things, errands, and chores we need to do. We should be perfectly aligned to do it this week. I hope. Because, <laughs> again, I've tried. Every single time that I try to get this going, something seems to happen to throw a monkey wrench into our plans. I definitely want to start it this week, and we'll see how it goes. Okay? All right. And then after that, we'll play it by ear. The next game that I'm interested in playing is called Another Crab's Treasure. And that game is coming out, I want to say it's the 25th of April, which is a Thursday. So probably I would start it on that Friday. And apparently, it is a Souls-like game starring a hermit crab. We just watched the trailer for it on this week's DSP versus the Internet clip show on DSP React. And it seems like a combination. It seems like, yes, there's Souls-like gameplay in there, but there's also platforming and stuff like that. Um, for example, it shows him like throwing out a, like a hook and grabbing onto like a, a net and pulling himself towards it and then climbing up. And I was like, well, that kind of reminds me of Sekiro. So does that mean the gameplay is like Sekiro? Or is the gameplay more like like Dark Souls? You know, it's hard to tell. Um, but guess what? It's a Game Pass game. So once again, going in line with the request, play more games, play games that aren't just AAA, try different things. That's what we're doing. We're going to try some new stuff this month. So... Pretty good that we're going to have this good variety, right? I think. Let's see what happens. Hopefully this stuff works out and ends up being entertaining and then we have a good variety of games to play. So there you go. Okay. Um, <clears throat> That's that. That's the schedule, guys. I actually have news. Ready for this? It's time for my favorite segment, your favorite segment, and everyone's favorite segment of the show. It is time for DSP News. So let's do it, shall we? Here we go. First piece of news. <clears throat> Excuse me. Skybound, which is the company that owns several different comic book IPs, is launching a crowdfunding campaign to raise money to develop a triple A level game for their popular comic book franchise and now popular Amazon Prime video series, Invincible. So, what will it be? Who knows? I don't know what it'll be. What I find funny about it, though, is that there's actually potential. Think how stupid this is, but it's true. There's actually potential, a potential that Invincible could come out and could actually be the Superman game we always wanted, but it's not Superman. Since no one else seems to be willing to make the Superman game we all want, someone else might beat them to the punch. It'll just be Invincible and not Superman. All right? Pretty silly to think of, but it might happen. All right? Now... I'm I'm a little weirded, uh, a little confused about the crowdfunding deal. I mean, I know that, that comic books is not a super profitable industry these days. It's just not. The, it, the movies make money, right? Comic book movies. But I guess print me as a medium or digital distribution of comic books isn't that big of a profitable deal. Um, <clears throat> and so I can get that Skybound, you know, Invincible is a semi popular property right now because it's had its prime video show that people like, and, it, you know, what's his name? Uh, Omni-Man, one of the characters from the show, just made a guest appearance in Mortal Kombat 1 as a character, but it's not white-hop popular, right? Like, Invincible is not a household name 
when it comes to superheroes, right? And because of that, <clears throat> perhaps that's why they need to seek crowdfunding. I'm not sure. Um, I, I would hope, if the game gets made, I would hope it's good. Like, I watched season one, and I liked season one. I thought that season one was good, and I'm thinking that if this game gets made, and it could have like different bigger the, the big set pieces and scenes from season one it could work <clears throat> or maybe it could be its own standalone plot line i'm not sure um i didn't see season two so not knowing where the plot went it's hard for me to say oh yeah this definitely could work as a game because all this other stuff happens in season two and between the two seasons that's enough for a video game right <clears throat> so i don't know uh I guess we'll see what happens. I guess you could look into it because I think they just launched that campaign. If you're interested, you might even be able to get in on it yourself. Um, I do find it weird, though, that they say they want to crowdfund a AAA game. It's like, typically a AAA studio seeks out an IP, right? They buy the rights to the IP, and then they make the game. Usually it's not the owners of the IP seek crowdfunding to get a AAA-style studio to make their game for them. That's... It almost seems like it's out of sequence, right? <clears throat> and maybe it's just that game studios, no one thought that it would be, that it would work. And maybe Skybound has an idea of how to make the game work. And that's the point. They want to like pitch that or something. Hmm. I don't know. I guess we have to see. But anyway, it's intriguing. Um, listen to this story. So recently, we were just talking about this PS5 Pro, which apparently is real. <clears throat> and the reason that it seems that it's confirmed to be real is because there was a YouTuber who made an entire video about it, apparently citing data leaks from Sony, and his video was stricken down by Sony on copyright grounds. Why would Sony strike down a video unless it actually is true information? Right? Unless they just want no misinformation out there but it sounds to me like if you're gonna strike down a youtube video covering this thing it probably is real then right <clears throat> so anyway um just listen to this news story ready sony wants to have game developers create an exclusive graphics mode for the ps5 pro so if you currently own an sbox uh, sbox wow an Xbox Series S or X, you may have noticed that certain games <clears throat> have this icon like in the corner of the game art, and it'll say like optimized for Xbox Series S and X. And what that means is supposedly the game developer tweaked that game to run as well as possible on that console. In some cases, excuse me, in some cases, that particular version of the game will run at higher frame rate or more stable frame rate, have added features and things that other versions of the game don't have. Okay? So what Sony is saying is, hey, on the PS5 Pro, we want this special graphics mode very similar to that to include 60 frames per second, upscaling to 4K using the PSSR technology, and ray tracing. The PS5 Pro will also have something that will be called an Ultra Boost mode for games that don't have these specific enhancements. Uh, and you're like, well, what is that? Well, <clears throat> basically pushing it as far as it can without having a specific mode just for PS5. So here's what's funny about that. Did you just hear what it said? I want, I'm going to repeat that. Sony is requesting that game devs make a special mode for games running on their PS5 Pro console that will be 60 frames per second, 4K resolution, and have ray tracing. Wait, wait a minute. Isn't that what it's supposed to have already on PS5? Doesn't it say that on the box? Hold on a second. Uh, hold on. Ah.
8K, 4K120 HDR. 8K, 4K120 HDR. What the fuck? <laughs> Wait a minute. Uh oh, I gotta fucking get this fixed. Okay. So you're telling me, you're telling me that they sold that console, the base PS5, on the premise that it would have all that stuff. It doesn't. Games don't render at 8K. Games don't render at 4K 120p. They don't. They don't run at 120 frames per second. Is there a single game that runs at 120 frames per second on, on P base PS5? It says it on the box. I just read it, and it doesn't have it, right? So, essentially what they're saying is, we want you to buy another PS5 to get what we said was in the last PS5. And we're requesting that game developers actually do it this time. Huh? Like, like, am I the only one who, like, like doesn't fall for this stuff? Maybe? A am I really? Am I the only one who sits here and I'm like, that doesn't sound right to me. We already paid for it. We already bought it. It says it on the fucking box. And if it's not in it, you know what I mean? Like, again, what's the saying? Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. I already bought your console, dude. You already, you already lied. You know what I mean? You already lied. So now, buy another console. Who's to say that these game developers, just because Sony's requesting it, that doesn't mean the game developers are going to do it. Game developers cannot get their games to run 60 frames on a current console at 1080p resolution. I'm going to repeat that. Game developers cannot get their games to run at 60 frames per second at only 1080p resolution on current consoles. What makes you think, because you give them better hardware, that they're going to do it? Like, it's not the hardware. It is not the fucking hardware. It's the game developers now that are the bottleneck. A, a technology is advanced too fast, too quickly, too far. And we have technology that's way above what we need what we need is more talent in the game development pool and we need to have management in the game development pool that cares about the games running well and performing rather than pumping out an unfinished product for quick profits we don't have that yet so why are we making another console who needs a new console nintendo why does nintendo need a new console because the switch is two generations behind TechWise. That's who needs a new console. Sony does not need a new console. Xbox does not need a new console. There's nothing wrong with their existing consoles. The game devs haven't caught up to the capabilities yet. So we have to stop this fucking madness. This, this whole story, I'm reading this, I'm like, and there's people freaking out. This is great. I can't wait to buy a PS5 Pro. I'm going to get this. Like, you are you stupid? You already have the box that does it. And it doesn't do it. Because the game devs didn't make it yet. Why the fuck do you want another console? I just really, I mean, what the fuck? What is wrong with people? What is with this? We absolutely must own every piece of technology, even if it doesn't do anything new. Every year I must go out and buy the new iPhone, despite the fact nothing new was added to it. I'm just an idiot. I got to go buy the new console from fucking Nintendo. I got to buy the new controller. I got to buy the new... Stop. Your behaviors make this possible. Your behaviors of spending on shit that you don't need, that doesn't do anything, make these companies pump out all this bullshit. This console not only is not needed, it does absolutely nothing to help the games industry. You're not going to see revolutionary new performance of games on a PS5 Pro. No one's utilizing base PS5 yet. So stop asking for more and stop buying more. Your stupid actions directly finance more stupid actions from these game companies. You will never see a good-looking Pokemon until you stop buying the Pokemon that looks like shit. All right? You will not see companies stop trying to take advantage of consumers until the consumers get wise and stop get taking advantage of.
It's just, I, I can't believe it. I, I, I'm reading the story, and you can just look in the comments, and everyone's, ha, 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 this is great news. Like, ha, 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 you're all fucking dumb. Every one of you. See, this is the problem. Steak Sandwich says, well, it's their choice. It's their money. Yes, it's their choice, but you have to understand something, Steak Sandwich. Their choice is ruining the game industry for everyone. There is a reason why it's taken so long to get GTA 6 and all the DLCs for GTA 5 were canceled. The people who sunk money into GTA Online for a decade. So you could say, oh, it's great. They could spend their money on whatever they want. But when it hurts everybody else, that's when there's a problem. When the whole games industry gets pushed to a live service model and the only games we can get are $60 up front and then you have to continuously do microtransactions to get anything out of the game. Oh, well, people could just do whatever what they want with their money. Yeah, but you fucked everyone over. Now we all have to play those shit games. There's nothing left. You understand? That is what I'm saying. People need to wise the fuck up. <clears throat> they need to. Or else this industry will continue to go down the slippery slope it's going. You will have more shit games than other good games. You won't have the good games we used to have anymore. It's going to be all crap, man. It's just frustrating, you know? Anyway, um, that's my take. You can completely disagree with me, and that's fine. You know, that's totally fine. I'm just, I'm getting tired of, in this industry, people who are just so ignorant. They're actually, they, it's, this should be bad news. Like, no exaggeration. This news story should be, like, a bad news story. Like, wow, that's really stupid. We already bought the console, and now they're asking that game devs do what was promised on the box of that console on another one that we have to buy for even more money, right? That's a bad news story. But no, it's not. Go look at the people reporting that story, and everyone's excited. Oh, this is great. I can't wait for it to buy my PS5 Pro. They're all morons, and they all have money. Morons with money, and they spend it stupidly, and it skews the industry in a bad direction. What should happen is no one buys the PS5 Pro. It tanks, and then Sony says, oh, fuck. Maybe now we actually have to have people make good games instead of focusing on tons of hardware no one needs. But that's not what's going to happen. PS5 Pro is going to be a bestseller. Everyone's going to want one. You're going to have to pre-order it. You're going to have to fucking buy it from scalpers on fucking eBay again. It's the whole rigmarole over again. It's going to be the same cycle, you know? It's frustrating, man. It is. It's frustrating. I've been around YouTube now for 16 years. I've seen this industry, how it evolves and how it changes and the things that happen. And it's like, people are getting so dumb in the way that they act. And then <laughs> it's just going to keep getting worse. There is a very good reason right, why, right now. Why we are five months almost. We're four and a half months into the gaming year. All right. And maybe on one hand, you can count the actual number of good games that have come out. There have been a ton of games that have come out. But this year, what are the big, giant, interesting blockbusters that we liked that came out? And, mo and by the way, that's subjective too. It's not even like it used to be where everyone agrees there's these this game and this game and this game was great. Some people will be like, oh, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Some people will be like, oh, Like a Dragon. Some people will be like, oh, this, that. You know, you just pick and choose. But it's not like it used to be. It used to be by now. A third into the year, we would have had a ton of amazing games that came out and everyone was blown away. Instead, we got fucking Suicide Squad, right? We got Rise of the Ronin, which is meh. You know, we got these meh, meh, so-so games. Dragon's Dogma 2 that runs like dog shit. Uh, everywhere. It runs like fucking dog shit. It's a piece of shit. Why? Because we have an industry where people over fucking spend on shit and don't demand better. So you will keep getting shit served to you until you stop spending your money on shit. <laughs> it will continue. This vicious cycle will never end. So there you go. Dogma is dog shit. It runs like shit. It, it's, a, it's a game that would be good if it performed well, and it performs absolutely poorly. It looks awful, and there's no reason for it to run that way on consoles. There's just no excuse for it to run that poorly. <clears throat> Drew Corporation, don't put words in my mouth. I didn't say the game overall is bad. I'm saying the graphical performance of the game is bad, which I said the entire time I played it. I said, it's, it's passable, but man, it should be better than this. You should not be paying full price for a game that runs s s below 30 frames fucking per second. It's just not acceptable. Okay? So anyway, you see the points I'm making, right? This is the way the industry is going. 
worse performance rather than better, yet we're buying better hardware. Why is that? Because people keep spending on the shit. It will not improve till we change. We have to change this mentality of go buy every fucking new game, even though they run crappy, you know? Okay. <clears throat> All right. Um. <clears throat> All right. That's what I've got for today. That's the news stories. So by the way, tomorrow night's Fallout review stream. If this goes well, let's say I do this stream and people show up and we have an engaging, supportive, fun stream. This might be an idea that I will push forward with other things. For example, let's say I, I beat a really lengthy, meaningful game. And people have been saying, hey, will we review the game? Yeah, you know what? I will. Let's do a night stream where I do a review stream. And I'll review the game and then we can all talk about it together as a community about what we liked and didn't like. And you know what I mean? I think that's better than the old style of review that I used to do. Let's see how this, this review stream goes for the Fallout TV show. This could lead to future content. But let's see. Let's see how this goes. Let's give it a shot. It's a new idea I came up with. It's totally out of left field, I know. I've never done an interactive review before. I want to see uh, what you guys think and how it goes. So, of course, it, you have to watch the show first. Please, by all means, enjoy the Fallout TV show. If you can't make it live, that's okay. You can always watch it on demand after. But as many of you that can be there live to participate in that discussion would be awesome. Okay? Cool. Let's get the shout-outs for today. We start off today with Mint, who re their membership for 25 fresh minty months. Thank you very much, Mint, for 25 minty months. All right. <clears throat> BB Phil, with our first super chat of the day, says, I love the whole new vibe of freshness and variety, exploring new ideas and such. Can we use this momentum to talk about new goals like a tie or a necklace? A necklace? I don't think I'm putting a necklace on. The tie we, we joked about, I actually do have two ties in my closet, uh, both of which I bought for my wedding. And I've literally hung there since, not used. Um, I would consider new goals if people come up with them, but no one really cared about the ties. I said I would do it, and no one cared. No one contributed for it. No, it was like, what? But if we think of new ideas for new goals, I'm, I'm all ears as long as they're viable. For example, someone presented an idea yesterday, do longer streams. That's not possible. I'm already in here the maximum amount of time I could possibly be in here. I can't extend my streams because I have a family and other responsibilities. I'm not a bachelor who just has all day to do whatever he wants. So that's a no. That I cannot do, all right? But let's talk about other other ideas. I'm I'm ears all ears for that. Okay. Um, <clears throat> our first tip of the day is a three dollar tip. Hold on. From Uwu, I can't wait for your Fallout review. I loved the show as well. Well, thank you, Uwu, <laughs> Uwu, for a three dollar tip. <clears throat> Amazing. Okay. I received a $10 tip from BB Phil. Click. Come on now. He says, Thank you for your response on uh, whether or not you'd be going to public events. How about corporate events like a motivational speaker speaking about how you struggled through hate and persevered? My firm pays for speakers that have less to offer than you. I can see the honesty in your eyes when you talk about your struggles. Uh, no one has reached out to me about being a motivational speaker as of yet. Thank you for the tip, though. Uh, I received a $5 tip from D-Man. Hold on. <clears throat> Did the animation play? Yes, okay. Okay, D-Man says, Sad to see Sony can pump out hardware faster than software. Last year was a crappy joke of a PSP and it just streams to your PS5. Now it's a pro console that nobody asked for. Here's, here's the sad fact is that people do ask for this shit. That's the... Yeah, well, can we get a PS5 Pro? Like, dude, you have a PS5 that is sitting literally on your shelf that isn't being utilized by game devs, and you want a stronger console than that? Like, what? You know what I'm saying? Like, 
<laughs> I, I don't even get it. I don't know. That's the sad thing. And same thing, like, as I was saying about Nintendo, right? For how many years the Switch comes out, everyone's disappointed. They're like, man, the Switch is a good console, but it just doesn't perform as well as their competitors. Why can't they come out with a Switch Pro that would have a better graphics card so it can actually run at higher resolutions, higher frame rates? Why can't we have fucking Joy-Cons that don't have Insano stick drift in every single unit? You know what I'm saying? Like, keep go I can keep going. All the things people wanted. What does Nintendo say? Oh, we'll put out a new Switch for you. It'll have absolutely none of those things you requested. Instead, it'll have a slightly better screen, improved speakers, and a better kickstand. Oh, by the way, we'll charge you the same amount as the first Switch. Oh. And then guess what happened? All the Nintendo fans literally went out and bought it. They literally went out and bought the console. And it's like, so what did you think would happen? Right? You have given Nintendo the evidence that they will do absolutely nothing to give you what you want or what you ask for, but you'll still spend the money anyway. So why would Nintendo ever listen to you in the future? Right? It just drives me absolutely nuts. So, yeah, it's really stupid. And uh, I agree that this industry has issues, you know? We need to have a better attitude when it comes to our spending habits or else you will always see those bad things, those bad behaviors from major game companies, game developers, everybody. How on earth can we complain about Pokemon Scarlet and Violet performing so poorly, looking so bad on the Switch, and then it's the best-selling Pokemon game of all time? We want to talk about mixed messages. Man, we really hate this. Let's buy it more than any other game. Right? Like... <laughs> okay. Anyway. Oh, my God. Excuse me. Whew. Um... Let me just check and refresh a certain page here. <clears throat> and... Sorry, this one thing just never loads. I sit here and I'm like, is it gonna load? I gotta refresh, I gotta do this, I gotta... Do, I gotta, I gotta Basically, beat around the bush to get it to work. <clears throat> okay. So far, I'm caught up on all shout-outs. So far. So, if anything else further comes in, I'll shout it out. But in the meantime, please tag me in the chat if you would like to talk about any certain topic today. We have a little bit of time for Q&A here on the end of the show. So, Cosmo says, this could be a cumulative budget over several streams where costumes for Pokemon... Trump, I don't know. Every new blockbuster, right? Huh? Did I miss part of this message? What is he talking about? Oh, how about costume goals? If we hit $150, that very next dollar to a theme, I saw some neo-goth-style cyberpunk costumes. Let the community dress you up. As much as you might not realize this. All right. These streams are not dress-up streams. This is not a cosplay event. This is me doing a podcast, playing some games, reacting to some content. All right. What happened was, out of literally out of nowhere, in 2020, right, me doing a random stream of reminiscing about the past, we were watching old videos. And we were watching a video, and all of a sudden, I was wearing this beige vest. And this video was from like over a decade before. And people were like, you have a vest? We've never seen that vest before. What is that vest? Do you still have it? And I went downstairs and I found the vest in my closet. <clears throat> and I pulled it out and I said, yeah, I still have it. So I put it on. And then basically it became a running thing that if people contributed a certain amount, I would put on this vest. Then that extended into a pair of gunner glasses that I found in my closet buried that I had never used. That later extended into hats, right? This is not a dress-up stream. Those are just silly celebratory things that I do because of support levels, all right? If the entirety of the stream becomes, gee, let's contribute to see Phil wear a costume, I think the meaning of the stream is lost, no? Like, the thing is, if I just put on a pair of gunner glasses, I toss a hat on, it's not a big deal. It's something I could still do and continue to do my stream, and it's normal. 
If I just fucking stop the stream to get into a giant Big Bird costume from Sesame Street and then stream as Big Bird. Hey, everyone. I'm here to play now. Oh, Snuffy. Don't make too much noise now. I can get distracted. Here we go, kids. Then what? We've lost the meaning. We have, okay? And listen, I totally get it. There's other content creators out there. They play characters, right? They, we just talked about this the other day. Dr. Disrespect really hit a stroke of genius by dressing up like a G.I. Joe guy, right? Because that's literally what it looks like. It looks like he's from the, the cartoon show, G.I. Joe, right? And he acts like a certain over-the-top character, personality, and he gets a certain audience of people doing that. More power to him. He found a way to be different in the space. That's not me. I'm not a character. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to dress up like Santa Claus or the Easter Bunny or Donald Trump or Joe Biden or the devil or Jesus. I'm not going to dress up like these characters and do a, a themed stream like that. Like, that's not the point. You, We've lost the script if the whole point of the stream is to see me look stupid, right? And that's actually what ended up happening with the vest streak where I had so many streams in a row where I was hitting wearing that vest in 2020 that it became more about, gee, will Phil, will Phil hit the goal? 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 And that was the whole stream became. I couldn't even, sitting here, I couldn't even have a fun stream because it became so many fucking people just talking about income constantly. It drove me bonkers. I was like, this sucks. I don't want to fucking deal with this. I just want to play the game that I'm playing. I want to have a good time with my audience chilling with games. I don't want to have people just be talking about it all day. And that's what it became. That's literally became. Okay, I'm like, get the fuck out of here, right? So, I'm actually happy in some regards that it ended and we could get back to normalcy, all right? The last thing I would want is for all of my content to now again become, is he going to hit the goal so he'll put on the wig and look like Donald Trump? Right? Is he going to put on the goal so he'll put on the full body grimace suit and walk around sucking grimace shakes for the rest of the stream? No. That's not what I want. As funny as it may sound, it would essentially change and ruin my content. It would make this unfun for me because I'm not doing content that I find meaningful anymore. So the answer is, no. KMF, we have in the membership for three months, says, oh, please, cyberpunk goth, please dress like this. <laughs> Swago Nito, 33-month membership, says, I prefer Kermit. You sound just like him. It's not easy being a streamer. Trying to play games and assholes are being trolls in the chat. <laughs> oh, yes. Anyway, I received a dollar fifty tip. <clears throat> From Anso Kamaru, I finally beat in Rebirth two days ago. I'm frustrated at how long it was. Even though I was enjoying the game immensely, I wanted to just, to just be over at some point. I wasn't even really dragging or boring. It just kept going and going and going. Open World, in my opinion, is one of the biggest cancers currently in the gaming industry of the past many years, and it needs to die. I'm curious on your thoughts on the ending and if when you get back to it. All in all, I thought it was an incredible experience. Well, there you go. I mean... Like I said, when I first started playing Rebirth, I was blown away at the open world. And then I got to the second open world area and I said, wait a minute, it's like the same as the first one. I mean, it looks different. It's a different, you know, environment or climate or whatever you want to say. But then I was like, why does it play or, or the same? It's the same ex objectives. This monster hunts, kill certain amounts of monsters, right? Do a certain, find the, the, the stupid crystal items, Get the lore pieces for the summon monster. Fight the summon monster. It was all the same. And I was like, wait, are you telling me that's the whole game? And people started to tell me, yeah, literally that's the whole game. Like the whole game is a big story beat. And then you go back to an open world that's exactly the same as the others. And then a big story beat. And then the back to the open world. And it's just the same back and forth. And I was like, well, that does kind of suck in my opinion. I feel like it should have been more unique, like if each open world had its own kind of stuff going on, or maybe enough content in the open world so at least it alternates between different things, right? But to me, it's like, it just sounds like uh, they ran out of ideas right away. 
And that's not good. And especially if it makes the game drag out and be so lengthy that it just feels burdensome. That's definitely not a good thing. So that is disappointing. You know, that is very disappointing. And I hope that's not the case. But I mean, the thing is, if I go back to the game and that's it, I mean, I might just do the story, right? I might literally just do the story and stay away from uh from the open world stuff or just rush through the open world stuff as, as you know, necessary evil of going through the area or whatever. But I really don't want to spend time, you know, on, on stuff that's not meaningful or ends up really, like, like, trite and meaningless and repetitive and, you know. So, I don't know. I guess we'll see if and when I get back to it, if I get back to it at this point. Because that's the thing, like, as I told you guys, people even was like, well, your problem is you played too many RPGs too, too together and too soon. I'm like, yeah, but they all came out next to each other. Oh, well, you should have skipped some. Well, that's the point I'm making, though. Once you're not in that window of the game being new, pretty much no one cares about it anymore. I, I played 20 hours of Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. If I go back to it during the summertime, will anyone care? Will anyone literally be like, yeah, I'm so excited that he's got back at Final Fantasy, right? Or is it going to be a case where everyone's like, ah, this game's old now, I don't care about it anymore? That's what I mean. So it's either you play it when it's new or you might as well not even play it, right? So then I play it when it's new and then it's, well, there's too many RPGs at once. Well, I didn't make them all come out at once. I told everyone this was going to be a problem. Everyone said, oh, Phil, it's just a problem for you. Well, guess what? Guess what? Exactly as I said was going to happen is exactly what happened. To a T, not even like a variation, exactly what I said was going to happen happened. Really. Even to the point of Final Fantasy VII Rebirth undersold compared to what Square Enix thought it was going to do. And remember, Final Fantasy VII Remake was a ginormous sales hit for them. So they thought that this was going to be like, you know, changing sales records and shit for Final Fantasy. And it ended up underselling. The proof is in the pudding, right? Okay. Anyway. I received a super chat from BB Phil. How about an, you order a bunch of exotic foreign candy and try new food items every time you hit five hundred or hundred dollars? This is not an eating stream. So here we go again. This is not a cosplay stream. This is not an eating stream. Do you want me to eat all day? <laughs> no, I don't want to eat on stream all day. It's a rarity when I do eat anything on stream, right? I I, I like to eat off stream. I like to have my that stuff. Pri I don't want to be eating snacks all day on stream that's not going to be good for me trust me <laughs> even if they're exotic snacks that's still you know i don't, definitely don't want to be eating all day i understand you're trying to come up with ideas but i don't think this is a very good idea <laughs> okay all right um all right so i'm checking and just so you know guys know i am checking uh you know, because typically by now like one minute man would have tipped and it's not there and i'm wondering if there's a delay or something i'm just gonna double check it's perfectly fine if one minute man did not contribute today or is you know not contributing right away you know but typically he does during this podcast so i just want to be sure that i'm not missing out on his on a shout out for him because i don't know what's going on with that check sometimes i check and then it's like oh yeah you just didn't get the email to tell you there was a contribution so let me double check it But again, if there's no contribution, that's also perfectly fine. He doesn't have to contribute every day. Okay, yeah, so far nothing today. So, there you go. I didn't miss it. There actually is nothing today as of now. Okay, good. At least I didn't miss it. It makes me nervous. That something's going wrong, and you know, I hate when I don't get notified. So there you go. Okay, no problem. All right. Uh, what would you guys like to talk about? We still have a little bit, just a little bit of extra time before we adjourn the show today. So any any topics, anything interesting? Ice Darkness says, have you considered playing a Fallout game to capitalize on the hype surrounding the IP right now? Um, listen, I love Fallout. 
I would love to play a Fallout game. We we played New Vegas a few years ago. That would be off the table. <clears throat> we were already considering playing Fallout 3 a little over a year ago, right? I already said I would consider playing Fallout 4 again, right? We've, we've talked about all of this. Fallout 4 is getting a next-gen update in the next week that makes it run at a better frame rate, okay? And I'm curious, but I'm almost positive... Fallout 4 is on Game Pass. It is. Okay? Fallout 3 is also on Game Pass. Okay? So they're all, all these games are a possibility. However, have we not just gotten out of RPG overload? Did we not just say we didn't want to do more RPGs? I I'm just saying. Like, this is the, what we just talked about, correct? So, you know, the way I see it, if I do that, people are going to be upset again and going to stop coming to streams and saying, this is boring. You know what I mean? Um, I'm a, look, I love Fallout. I would play Fallout 3 or 4 right now. The way I see it, Fallout 3 is already getting a remake. If you're not aware, this was leaked last year. Fallout 3 is getting a full-on remake from Bethesda and will at some point come out with better graphics and improvements. I'm assuming they're probably going to take Fallout 3 and put it into like the Fallout 4 engine. That's what I think, anyway. Um, right? And... Fallout 4 is the game that's getting the upgrade, correct? It's it's going to have a big upgrade within a week. Week? A little I think like a little over a week. Um So, it seems like if we were to play one right now, Fallout 4 would make sense because that's the one that's going to be running better. That's probably the game most people are going to be playing if they're playing Fallout right now. Um that's totally up to you guys. If that's something you want to see, early May is empty. I'm not even exaggerating. There is nothing going on in early May. There's no games out until like late May. So we have a big opening in the schedule. <clears throat> Where possibly you guys, you know, want to see a Fallout game. I'm open to that. I really am. But you got to let me know. And it has to be a consensus that people are going to show up, engage with those streams, and support. You know what I'm saying? Um, I want people to engage with the content. Not, oh, I'm playing it for me, and then within two streams, everyone complains, why did I start another RPG? Okay? So, that's totally up to you. And, uh, you know, let's see what, what people say. Right? What do you think? Do you guys like the idea of Fallout 4, perhaps, since it's getting uh, a modern upgrade in the next week and a half? Would you like to see that maybe in early May? And that will capitalize on the current popularity of Fallout, right? And that would, you know, be something different for May. We'd have time for it since uh, we're in a situation where there's just not a heck of a lot going on. Also, you know, it stands to reason I've only played Fallout 4 once. And it was at release, what, nine years ago? So after, I've never played it again since then. So doing a second run perhaps could be more interesting. Especially now I'm an interactive streamer. Back then I wasn't. So to actually have interactions, I'm sure you guys would tell me about things going on in the game and probably help me with the base building bullshit that's so frustrating, you know, to figure out yourself, right? <clears throat> but again, immediately what's going to happen is people are going to say, wait a minute, why did Phil start an RPG? He said that we weren't going to do RPGs. Now it's RPGs. Why the RPGs? Right? There you go. All right? All right. <clears throat> I see the $3 tip from John Lambo. The vest streak was epic. It was one of those you had to be there in stream chat to see. The last 10 minutes of viewership would skyrocket. Chat would go nuts, and the suspense was like a TV show. You're right. And this was happening every stream. And it sucked because there were streams where I'm trying to maintain viewership. I'm trying to maintain an interest in the game. And literally, you got people showing up just to be drama queens about, will Phil get his his goal in the next three minutes? You know, it was really fucking stupid. You know, as listen, as supportive as it was, as much as it helped, it really derailed the content for months and months. So, uh, Big Fridge did a super chat and says, people send in their issue and you give them advice. No, I am not a guru. I am not an, uh, an authority. I don't think I should be giving people life advice. I'm just being honest.
You wonder why the streak ended? I mean, how long was it going to last? It, it was, basically it was, hit $100 of tips every single stream. Both streams every single day. And it lasted, what was it, like three months, four months, something like that? I forget what it ended at. Because it was two streams a day for so many months. I can't remember how much it was, you know? So, I mean, it could only last a certain amount of time until it was going to eventually dry up. It got to a point where, like, I was playing certain games. Like, the game it ended at was, like, one of the Paper Mario RPG games, one of the new ones. And it was like, I wasn't even getting a lot of attendance onto the streams anyway. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just wasn't. And basically, it was forced. Like, people would show up at the last minute to see what the contributions were. And then they would drop a contribution and they would leave. Like, they weren't even there for the game. They were just there because they wanted to see the streak continue. And it was kind of stupid in that regard. Like, I wish people would have come by for the content rather than to just see me put on a stupid vest for a streak. You know what I'm saying? But it was it, it was inevitable it was going to end. There was no way it was going to continue indefinitely. It's not possible. Uh, Easy Steve did a super chat and says, playthroughs like Harold Halibut are refreshing, to be honest. You feel like that is the case? I don't know much about the game. You know, so I guess we'll see what happens with this. Again, if it's something you guys like, you want to see me continue playing after today, I can. But I, I really don't know that much. So I can't really attest <clears throat> to what it is right now. Did I? Bill says I actually was sick for a few days. And then I came back and then it resumed. But then it ended within like the week of me coming back. What are you going to do? <clears throat> can I ever play The Sims? I did play The Sims. I played The Sims 4. And I made a character that was like me. And then I made a, a, a virtual, like a, an invented character. And, and lived through their life. And after doing those two runs, I was like, eh, I think I've seen everything the game really has to offer that's interesting to me. And it kind of ran out of content and I never went back. I'm, I'm well aware that with The Sims, it's the infamous series where you go back and you keep buying DLCs and shit, but I just never bothered with it. Hello, Gameboy84. How's it going today? Welcome, welcome. Will the crab game let you give the crab a goatee? I have no idea if there is character creation in the Another Crab's Treasure game. I, I have no idea. So. Royal Raccoon, I ignored you because I have no idea what the hell you're talking about. And you didn't even tag me in chat either. <laughs> I have no idea what he's talking about. He's like completely unrelated stuff. And he's trying to get my attention. I'm like, I don't know what he's speaking of. I'll just ignore him. <laughs> this happens all the time. Yes, another Crab's Treasure is on Game Pass. Correct. It is a Game Pass game. Fox says, the vest during Ghost of Tsushima and you have problems with Twitch because people were false reporting you. Huh? No idea what that means. Oh, Radical Jaws, no, I don't even remember the box art legendaries in Pokemon. So I can't have a, per a, a, a personal fave. I don't remember them at all. Hello, X Shooter. How's it going? What kind of game is Harold Halibut? And we're about to find out. I don't know. I literally don't know. Oh, we're going to see for ourselves. Oh, man. Oh, stretch. Have I ever had Halibut tacos? Not to my knowledge. I think I've had cod. Um... Oh my god, why can't I remember that other kind of fish that I used to have all the time? I'm having a brain fart because I haven't had it in a long time. <clears throat> Not cod, but there's a fish that's like a thin, flatter fish. What the fuck is it that I used to eat all the time? I can't remember it now. But I've had that, and I've had cod, and I've had... I think I had rockfish once. Tacos. 
Tilapia. That was it. Tilapia. Thank you. It was tilapia that I've had a bit. I used to it used to be a restaurant that had like a tilapia dish that was really really good that I used to get. Um. Yes. So I've had cod, tilapia, rockfish, but that's it. I've never had halibut. I don't know what halibut is like. Is the Fallout TV series woke? It's, let me put it this way. It's funny because at one point it has, it totally pokes fun at woke culture in some parts. 100% it does. You know? At the same time, there is a character in there that I feel like was put in there for the sake of having that box checked. But at the very same time, the character is fine. Like, the character is not, oh, look, I'm here to be completely intrusive to the story and disrupt it for the sake of representation. It wasn't like that at all. The character naturally fit into the plot and is almost unnoticeable, which is how it should be, right? It should Just because someone is gay or trans or whatever, should that be disruptive to the life cycle of everyone? You know what I'm saying? Or should it be they're a normal person who actually is just like all of us, right? That's really what it should be. They're just a normal person like all of us. They just fit into normal life, right? Now, oh, because someone is trans or gay. Oh, here's a ginormous side plot covering all of that. Wait, what? Why, why can't they just be normal like everybody else? And then it's not a big deal, right? And that's how they actually handle it in the Fallout show. And I think they do it really well because of that. <laughs> see 90s guy doesn't even know what character I'm talking about we'll talk about that tomorrow during the live review yes we will <laughs> I received a very generous tip I can, only I could look at it Well, here's the thing. I received a $25 tip from someone who says that they are a one-minute man, but I know for a fact they're not one-minute man. <laughs> As you know, there's various things that I can see, like email addresses and stuff, and plus, in particular, this person didn't even spell one-minute man correctly, so I know it's not one-minute man. It's someone trying to pretend like they're one-minute man, though, but they're not. But it is a $25 tip, so thank you very much to this person. And uh, I will put them up there. So you're going to see that. You ready? Here's the difference. It's not the regular one minute man. Because it doesn't have the one. It's the word one. <laughs> so it's definitely not them. You know, when someone is a regular contributor. And they come by almost literally every day. And they contribute exactly the same way. You tend to recognize that. You know, and this is not. But I, hey, I appreciate it. I don't know why they're trying to pretend like they're one minute man. But thank you very much for the tip. I appreciate that. <clears throat> like I said, it could very well just be that one minute man isn't isn't uh gonna come by today, and that's fine. I don't have to come by every day. Not it's not, you know, it's much appreciated, but it's not required, nor is it the end of the world sky is falling if uh you don't get a contribution from one minute man every day, okay? Uh, oh my god, excuse me. Whew, sorry about that. I didn't mean to belch uncontrollably. That was absolutely disgusting. Okay. Budo Mastermind is here. Did it, 35 months as a member and says, Hey, Phil, how are you? What is the game about? I have absolutely... No clue! No clue at all. And Budo Mastermind, even though that is the, the diamond crown, sadly, I mistimed my milestone animations. So I think that's a little early. I think it's next month you will earn the diamond crown. It looks cool though, right? That's what the crown will look like when people earn their diamond crowns here on the channel for three years as a member. But sadly, uh, it's not it's not time yet. You still have the rose gold. But anyway, we'll see what this game is all about in a bit. <clears throat> No, 
No, I don't get any personal information via PayPal, as I say. What I see on PayPal when people tip is what they want me to see. On PayPal, you have the ability to set up your account to have your full name, your shipping address, your email address, your phone number, all of that. Or you could have it have literal no information whatsoever. Just in, the, the minimal amount of information I ever will get is an email address. That's it. That's all I'm guaranteed to see. Basically, what I do is I get a tip from an email address, and then I get the body of the message is what you put in your tip. So you could say, hey, this is from you know, Mastermind. Have a good day, Phil. Here's $5 or something. And then it'll then I read that, and then I know who it's from. <clears throat> That's all I see. That's it. Now, there's some people who have... You know, these accounts set up, I guess, like to buy shit on eBay and stuff. And if it's their prerogative, if they put their personal information in there to make it visible for everyone, and then every single time that they send anything to anyone, all that information is, is visible, I think that's dumb. I don't think anyone should have it set it up like that. Like, that's a huge risk, I feel, to have all your personal information completely public on PayPal. I would never do that. Um, So I don't recommend that. FYI, I recommend that you all, if you have a PayPal, you turn that off. But... All I get is the email notification saying you tipped, so I see your email address, and I see the body of your message, and that's all I see. Do I remember what my earliest game ever was? Like, the first game I ever played? Pong. Okay. The first game I ever saw was my uncle playing a flight simulator game on his PC. The first game I ever played and owned was Pong because he gave me a Pong home console to bring home and play. Then I liked that so much, he then gave me his Atari 7800 and all of his games. So then I don't, I couldn't tell you what the first game was there because I went home with a bunch of games and I played them all. Apostate Cantus, thank you for 18 months as a member. The Drew Corporation, are you done now? Are you done, like, bitching and venting in the chat now that I've ignored you for, like, 45 minutes? Because literally you didn't hear what I said, and then you tried to make me say something I didn't say, and now you've been trying for 45 minutes to disprove me and nobody cares? <laughs> are you done yet? I'm just curious, because if you're going to continue to do this all day, I'll just time you out now. I mean, no one wants to hear this nonsense. You're fucking... Making it all about yourself. Nobody cares. <laughs> Darth Hobbit says his first name was either Boogerman or Mortal Kombat on the SNES. Mortal Kombat was your first game? That's rough. And Boogerman was your other first game? That's even more rough. They're both mature-rated, like, gross-out games, right? Ha-ha. <laughs> No, I'm never bringing back the King of Hate moniker. It is officially retired for over a year now, and it is out of all of my content. It has nothing to do with me whatsoever. I've disowned it because people are not capable of being intelligent enough of understanding what it means. Instead, they just immediately put it towards a negative association, and I refuse to <clears throat> put up with that moving forward, so it's done forever. Cosmos has done a super chat. His opinion on new indie games for stream, like four games... Is it not something that has potential? It's exploratory and could probably laugh at gimmicks of the games. What do you mean, Cosmos? I have no idea what you're saying. Are you saying do a stream and play like four indie games in said stream? Is that what you're saying? If you can elaborate on that, I'd appreciate it. But we are out of time, guys. We're going late. And it's like, man, I want to start with this new game. <clears throat> All right. So thank you for chilling with me here today. I appreciate you all hanging out and having a good time. I had a good time. And uh, tomorrow will be an interesting one because tomorrow we're going to talk about this Harold Halibut game, which I really don't know anything about, right? Like, I'm, I'm just, I'm stumped as to what it will be. I guess we're about to find out. I've never played a claymation game since Clay Fighter in the 90s, right? That's the last one that had claymation in it. So I guess we're going to see exactly how it goes. Um, I just received a $5 tip from John Lambo. What's the rarest comic book that I owned back in the day? Um, I don't know. I didn't really 
own any rare like I never spent a lot of money to buy an old comic book or anything like that I was a collector of new comics so I had basically when the new X-Men started remember there was the Jim Lee Chris Claremont X-Men that became kind of like the sister book to Uncanny X-Men so when that started is when I started actively collecting comic books <clears throat> And so I was always getting Uncanny as well as regular X-Men every month for like years, two, three years probably. And then um, I started getting X-Force, X-Factor when there was the crossovers, like the Executioner song. Uh, I collected Spider-Man throughout the Maximum Carnage saga. And I then started collecting Image Comics. Like I had Spawn number one. I had all the original Spawns, like Spawn number one through like 20. I owned all those. Um... As well as uh, X Force, not X Force, excuse me. Um, look, Young Blood, Young Blood, and like all those early Image comics, I actually owned all of them at one point. Um, but that was about it. I didn't really own any rare comics per se. And over time, basically, here's the thing: everyone in the '90s thought, "Oh, I'm going to collect comics, and these are all going to explode in popularity and value," and then they never did. The only comics that ever held real value were like the old comics that were origin stories. So if you have the origin story of Venom, if you have the origin story of Carnage, if you have the origin story of the black suit Spider-Man, right? Or the original X-Men comics, the origin story of this character, that those ended up worth money over time. But when the comic boom of the 90s was happening, that was like an artificial boom. And when it fizzled out at the end of the 90s, literally all comics were valueless, except the old ones. All the stuff that came out in the late 80s, 90s that people thought would have value had zero value. So even even me, like with the Image Comics, by the end of the 90s, they had almost no value. And I was like, screw all this, and I gave it all away. I gave all my comics away. I, I don't have a single comic from back in the day. And I had arguably thousands, you know? Like I said, I was collecting all the X-Men, all the... I, pro I had a whole file cabinet full of comics. And I just got rid of them. Okay, are we good now? All right, we gotta get, we have to end the show at some point, so we're gonna end it now. Thank you all. I hope that you've enjoyed the Level One podcast. I sure have, and I'm excited for a full and fun day of gameplay streaming here today with you. Thank you guys very very much, and I shall see you tomorrow. Some interesting info on this new game we're checking out. All right, guys, peace out. See you then.